All right. Here's our equation. We need to identify the vertex, the directrix, and the focus. But the only way we know how to do that is if it's in one of these formats over here, right? So what we need to look at is how are we going to rewrite that? Well, let's kind of think about we know that we have the you know we know the binomial squared thing, but let's kind of just think of some general things. First of all, do you guys notice how the x's are on one side, the y's are on the other side? On those equations? Do you guys see how they're on the same side over here? So why don't we get why don't we just separate them? Now you could keep the y, the 12 over here, but I'm just gonna tell you for simplicity purposes, we might as well just get it to the other side. So therefore, I have x squared plus 8x equals 4y minus 12. All right. Now again, this main thing we're trying to do is complete the square. We're trying to create our perfect square trinomial. So I have, eight, I have x, eight, x squared plus 8x. And if you guys remember, the main thing about completing the square is taking your b and dividing it by 2 and then squaring it. So if you guys kind of, you know, you could say like that's 8x squared plus bx, right? So b is 8. So b divided by 2 squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Square that, you get 16. Now remember, you're going to add that to your left side and add that to the right side. So you're going to have an equation that's going to look like this. x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 4y minus 12 plus 16. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Yes? Why did you do that? OK. So the reason why I did that is now what I have created is what we call a perfect square trinomial. So a, what's nice about a perfect square trinomial is this can be factored. Every single perfect square trinomial can be factored into what we call binomial squared. So I'm going to do this one slowly. And then for the next two, I'm going to just put them as binomial squares. But this can be factored into x plus 4 times x plus 4. So the reason why we did that, to answer your question again, every single time you do the difference or the completing the square, you're always going to get it factorable into factors that are exactly the same. And that's what we want. So therefore, then this becomes 4y plus 4. Now, here's, where another, here's a big mistake that students will make. And it's like after you guys have already done the hard work, here's the mistake people will make. This still doesn't look like in that form, right? So I can rewrite this as a x plus 4 squared. Over here, do you guys see how I got fa to factor out that 4? Right? Because if you see it, 4p is multiplied by your y minus k. So I'm going to factor out a 4. And I'm going to be left with y plus 1. That's really important, because what students will do is they'll give me the vertex, and they'll say, oh, yeah, it's negative 4, negative 4. No, no, no. You've got to factor that 4 out. So it's 4p times the y, that y coordinate. Does that make sense? OK. So let's go ahead and identify our vertex. And one thing I want you guys to remember from last class period, h is always with x, and y is always with OK, so now you got that out of your end, right? Because we're not going to forget that for your quiz. Wait, wouldn't that just say hex and something else? Well, P. Hex and P. Hex and P, what? Oh, my God. Hex and P. Oh, OK. Yeah, OK. Yeah, that works. Hex and P. Um, so let's go. We got negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1. I label that as the vertex. So I identify the vertex as negative 4, negative 1. So I just went ahead and plotted that. Now, Coles, please stop. The next thing is we need to understand. Now again, you guys, here's these formulas I wrote down, just so if you wanted them. But again, I don't really, for, I don't really go by the formulas. The next thing, once I find the vertex, the next thing I want to do is find p. So what you're multiplying your, that y minus k is, is your uh, 4p. So in this case, I can say 4 is equal to 4p. Therefore, p is equal to 1. Now, we already know this parabola opens up or opens down, correct? It's the one because x was squared. So 
your focus, if you guys remember your P, where did my graph go? P is the distance from your focus to your, I'm sorry, your vertex to your fo fo focus. So here's what you guys did. Remember these? All right? Your parabola either opens up or it opens down. It looks like one of these. Opens down, opens up. The value of p is the distance from your vertex to your focus. So if p is 1, should I be going up or should I be going down? Up, because it's positive 1. If it was p was negative 1, I would go down to my focus. So since p is positive 1, that means my focus is up 1. I'll label that as f. So I say my focus is negative 4, comma 0. Now, another important point. Does your parabola open up towards your focus or away from your focus? Towards your focus. So it's pretty easy to sketch a graph. Do I care what your parabola looks like? No, not the shape, as long as it's, going in the, as long as it's opening in the right direction. The last but not least, the distance from your vertex to your focus is p. The distance from your vertex to your directrix, which is the line, is opposite of p. So it's still p, but it's in the opposite direction. So if I went up one to go to my focus, to go find my directrix, I need to go down one, right? Now, the other mistake that students will make is they'll say, oh, here's your directrix, and they'll put a point. But guys, the directrix is that purple thing. Is, it, is your directrix a uh, point? No. no, it's a line. And when your graph is vertical, what kind of line? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. So we need to remember how we write the equation of a horizontal line, which is y equals. So my directrix. is y equals negative 2. Okay, 